Let's dive straight into the coding and I'll be explaining you more about local storage along this video. So let's start with setting a new item in the local storage. So how to do that? It's really simple. You just need to call the local storage object in your JavaScript code and then use the set item method on the local storage object. Because it's a method, we need to use parentheses and we need to pass some arguments. The first argu argument is the key. We will be able later to get the data from the local storage by their key, by their keys. So it's important to use a unique key name. Uh, what's also worth mentioning is that it doesn't have to be mm, the mm, continuous string or I'm not sure how to say that but uh, you can use spaces so uh, you can set for example my key so it have to be string but you don't need to join words with underscores or hyphens so you can use spaces uh, but i guess mm, the best practice is to use some hyphens or underscores to join words but it's not necessary you can define key like that and the second argument you need to pass to set item method is the value. The value also needs to be a string. So you can pass whatever string you want. Let's say my value, which has to be a string. Okay. And now if I will run my page with this JavaScript code initialized and now I refresh the page this item with this key has been created in the local storage but of course you don't see anything because the browser doesn't say something like uh, oh you you've created a local storage item no, but you can look up for those items in the local storage. You need to open DevTools and go to Application tab. And then you need to go to Local Storage section. Then when you expand this section, you will see by the URL, you will see the storage for particular website. In our case, as you can see, we have this key and this value from the code. So we've just created a new item in the local storage. If you will modify the value and refresh the page again, you will see that the value has changed. So setting item is also the same like updating item. But of course you need to use the same key. Because if you will use some different key and you need to remember that the key is case sensitive so if i will modify if i modify the key and change the first letter uh, to uppercase and now i will set for example new value for new key and now i hit refresh you see that i have two different keys i have two different items in the local storage so now, if I want to get items from the local storage, I need to use the local storage 
object and use get item method. And now I need to pass only one argument and the argument should be the key. So if I will type my key, I will get the item, I will get the value from the item from the local storage by its key. But of course now I won't see any, mm, any changes in the browser, so I need to get this item and do something with, with it. For example, I can uh, write it to the document or I can just console log it. Let's say I will use document write method and let's pass to this write method as an argument our item from the local storage. So now let's refresh and I'm getting the new value in the document, in the HTML document. So now when I change the key name for the uppercase, you see that I'm getting the new value for new key from the local storage. So now you have an idea how to get items from the local storage and how to set items to the local storage. But what about removing them? It's also really simple because of course you need to use the local storage object and use the remove item method. And now the same like with get item method, we need to pass as an argument to remove item method, we need to pass the key name. So let's remove the first one, the first item from the local storage with my key. So now I need to refresh the page and as you can see that item has been removed. So now I've, of course I can refresh the page multiple times and nothing will be changed because there is no item with this key anymore. So as you can see it's really simple you are calling the local storage object and using set item get item or remove item uh, to manipulate the local storage. But using local storage it's most of the time uh, useful not only to store a simple string but to store some sets of data. And by the sets of data, I mean objects or arrays. So let's, for example, create some object, my object, and let's create some property for that object, just a property, and let's also create some method. We can create some method like this, assigning a function and let's console log just a method. We can use of course yes six syntax and arrow function or we can use this kind of syntax uh, using some method as a function and it will work the same. So now if I cancel log my object I will get an object with some property and some method. I can of course call this method in my code so I will get in the console just a method string because it has been console it has been locked to the console by calling this method but now if i want to store this object in the local storage i need to serialize this object by serialize i mean convert object or array because we will also uh, we can also use arrays 
um, and store them in the local storage, but you need to serialize those data to convert them to just a plain string. And in JavaScript, we can use for that a JSON object and use a stringify method. So in our case, we will use my object. Let's cancel log this. And let's look up in the console what we will get. And we are getting only the property because when you are stringifying objects or any other types of um, of data you are able to stringify only the plain data the plain data is just a string or uh, some integer or float uh, but you're not able to stringify functions methods or some other for example if statements you cannot stringify them because they are kind of executable, executable code. So to store objects, if you want to store objects in the local storage, you can only store a plain data. So let's change our object to, for example, a car and let's change the car here also. And let's use, for example, type we want to have a sport car with color red and with two seats. Okay, so now if I will stringify this object, I will get a string with plain data. Where is the type? There is a type, there is a color, there is number of seats. So this is kind of data I can store in the in the local storage. I can also create an array, let's say numbers, and let's create some array with numbers. I have now array with numbers and I can do the same with numbers using JSON stringify. Uh, you probably may wonder what's the difference between this array as numbers here in the code and this array as a string in the console. It may look the same, but if you call in the console log numbers as an array, you see that it's available as a set of data, whereas a key, the automatically set key in the array for order data so now you, you see that we have keys and we have values and we have also length and also the prototype method where we can access some methods to use them on the array. Those methods are um, default by JavaScript. So we can, for example, find some elements from the array or index um, or, or show uh, indexes of those items or slice or push new items and so on. In the string, we have only data. There are no any other, I, there are no any other methods available in this JSON stringify um, data. So now you know that you can stringify, you can serialize your data like objects or arrays and change them and um, convert them to the string. So we can store this data to the local storage set item Let's name it car because this is the key. And now we can pass the value, but we cannot just pass the car. We need to pass JSON stringify and then stringified value. 
Of course, we can create a new variable, new constant. Stringified car object. And we can, for example, do something like that. So now if I refresh the page and go to application, you see that we have a car as an um, with value as a string and it's in a JSON format. So now we have this item and we can get this item from the local storage using local storage get item and the key. So now in the console we have data from the local storage, but we need to convert this data again using JSON parse to revert it back to the object type of data. So we are parsing the JSON format of object of the car and now we are able again to use prototype methods on our object. Okay, so that's the core of using local storage. But I also want to tell you a few more things which are important uh, when you want to choose local storage over cookies because uh, you can also store data the same way uh, as you want to as you can store them in the local storage you can store uh, data the same way in cookies so what's the difference where to use cookies or where to use local storage cookies allows you to store only four kilobytes of data where local storage allow you to store five megabytes of data. So it's a lot of, a lot of, a lot more of data available to store in the local storage. Local storage has no expiration. So when you store something in your local storage, it will be stored to until a user clear the browser the browser um, data so if the user won't clear the local storage data won't clear the preferences in um, in the browser won't clear uh, manually uh, by uh, using clearing the whole data or uh, clearing the single um, local storage data for a specified um, URL, then this data will be accessible forever. So user need to clear those data manually. If you are using cookies, you can set the expiration date, which means that if the expiration um, will pass, data will be automatically unavailable. So local storage is kind of permanent storage of data comparing to cookies. Also worth mentioning is that um, by using this local storage object, you can access this object, those get item, set item methods only by a client, which means you can access this by your browser or by the JavaScript code which runs in the browser. You cannot access the local storage on the server side in your backend code. You cannot just get items from the browser and move them to the server. Of course, you can overcome that by sending data from client to server uh, via AJAX request or uh, passing those data to a form and to the um, hidden input in the form and then uh, by sending that form 
to the server from the client, then you also can pass those data. But uh, you cannot just straight get those um, items from local storage uh, from the client to the server. You need to uh, create some additional code to do that. Comparing to cookies, we don't have any cookies uh, right now, but comparing to cookies, when you are requesting your site, there are also um, past headers for every HTTP request. HTTP doesn't mean that uh, it, um, it's not secure site. It means that every request from the browser to the server, it's HTTP request. Your, your site could be, could run on HTTPS protocol, but uh, it's sending just a request to the server and that request um, is called HTTP request. So that kind of request, HTTP request, has headers and those headers are sent to the from the browser as a request headers uh, from the browser to the server. And if you store cookies in your website, then every single request has those cookies. We don't have any cookies right now on this site, but if you will visit some other site and uh, look up the network tab and headers for requests, you will see that uh, especially if you're logged in, uh, there should be some uh, cookie passed with your session, with your token session. Uh, and what does it mean? Uh, every request to the server from the client, from the browser has cookies. So if you are storing a lot of data in cookies, but of course, you cannot store too much data because, as I said before, it's only four kilobytes available for a cookie. Uh, but if you are sending a lot of cookies, it generates additional traffic between the browser and the server. With local storage, there is no additional traffic because we are not sending those data for every single HTTP request. We are sending this data only uh, on demand. If you need those data, you are calling get item method on local storage and then uh, you are getting those data. You are not getting this data every single time with HTTP request. There's also something like session storage which is very similar to local storage. It works almost the same, but the main difference is that the session storage is created only for single session. So it's like a cookie because it has some expiration and the expiration is only for one session, which means if you close the tab with your website, then the session storage for that website will be cleared. The same goes if you close, of course, the whole uh, browser. So session storage works the same like local storage, but they are available. The, the data from session storage is available only for single session. If the user close the browser or close your uh, web page by closing the tab, the session storage uh, disappear. And there is the last thing uh, I the last thing I want to mention which um, differ cookies and local storage is the security. If your site is XSS vulnerable, which means um, some users, some attack, some hackers uh, can pass some JavaScript code into your code. Some can inject JavaScript code into your code by, for example, um, filling out form in your website um, by commenting below your 
for example, posts uh, or um, posting something uh, on their uh, profiles and so on. Uh, if you didn't protect against uh, those XSS uh, vulnerabilities, then some bad guys uh, can get data from the local storage of other users because if they can in inject their javascript code into your site then they can get the data from the local storage so then treat all those data as publicly visible so if you want to store some session tokens i'm not uh, telling about session storage here because it's available only for uh, one session but of course uh, the session storage and local storage uh, are mm, vulnerable mm, for this kind of attack uh, so if you want to store the session token for logit user for example and uh, the server and you you want to pass this token uh, to your server and then check if user is logged or not then think about it and if you are not sure that your site is free of mm, those kinds of mm, security holes then consider using cookies but only server cookies which means they are http only cookies which have only which has only uh, downsides because if you are using the http only cookies they are available only to the server so if you will set http only cookie on the server for storing logged user tokens then those cookies won't be available on the client side so you won't see any cookie here but this security topic this cross-site scripting vulnerability uh, is a matter of wider video and i'm going to uh, record it for sure uh, when where i uh, show you where i'm going to show you uh, how to mm, how to use this kind of xss attack and uh, check if your uh, website is free of this kind of uh, security holes but for now about local storage and comparing them to cookies i guess it's everything i wanted to tell you hopefully you've enjoyed this video if you have any questions leave a comment below this video thanks for watching and have a great day